And what he was saying is that Bruce Lee, because he didn't have the support of the Kung Fu masters, he was searching for support from well-known competition fighters, such as Joe Lewis. So what he would do is ask for Joe Lewis to train under him to be his student, to be his disciple. And he tried to get Joe Lewis to agree and then and then have Joe Lewis promote Bruce to enhance his credibility. And Joe Lewis would say things like, you know, he would always want me to promote him. And he would do this with other fighters as well. So basically Bruce was trying to develop his credibility through the talents of others. Um, others that, are, that have already shown skill and talent and have already gotten to a, a, a good reputation. Um, he wanted to basically um, have them give him more credit for um, helping them get to a higher level. Now, To me, I see this as um, uns like not the spiritual way. But when you're talking about trying to get fame, when you're striving for fame purposefully, that cannot be spiritual. And when you're caught in between that, where you have the Eastern philosophy trying to teach one way, but then yet you want, you have the strong ambition, you still want this fame. It ends up, he ends up living a contradicting life. And another thing that I was saying is how he would learn Wing Chun um, in, in Hong Kong. Under one of the senior instructors, not Yip Man, but a uh, senior instructor below Yip Man. And he wanted to progress faster, but there was a class, and you can't progress as fast in a class than you can individually when you train one on one with your teacher. So, what he would do is that he would tell other people that were other students that the teacher was not there. Um, for instruction and they'd have to go home come back another day when really the teacher was there but then Bruce Lee would tell the other students that the teacher's not there and then he, then Bruce Lee would show up by himself so he could get the personal instruction himself so that shows that's another unspiritual thing you know and that's something where it shows how Bruce was more consumed with himself and about his own development. He didn't care about the development of others around him. And also, it mentioned how he wanted a girlfriend to marry him. But the girl, she felt, I think her name was Amy, but she kept declining Bruce over and over again. It was like over three times that she kept declining him. And she was declining him because she said that he was very immature. That he would be one way when she's with him alone, but then when his friends are around, he'd be very chauvinistic and be a show off and completely change into a different person. And she would say that he would always be talking about his own goals, his own ambitions, in which to um, have her live his life and basically cheer him on to um, further his ambitions and not really caring much about hers. And that's another very um, selfish thing to do. So she ended up not marrying him. But it was also saying how Bruce was always looking for attention 
everywhere he went that he wanted attention from people. And he said that when he didn't get the attention, he would just leave. Alright, and Joe Lewis was also saying how Bruce Lee was watching his own moves, watching Joe Lewis's tapes, on his fighting tapes, and analyzing and studying his way of fighting, and then learning from Joe Lewis, but never acknowledging to Joe Lewis or anybody else that he learned from Joe Lewis. And it was saying how Bruce would study or he would read philosophies from J. Krishnamurti, take J. Krishnamurti's philosophy and just change some words in it and make it his own. And never really sharing or expressing that that philosophy came from J. Krishnamurti. So he would hide a lot of this knowledge that he was obtaining. Now this is very Western in a sense of where this is what people do, what capitalists do in order to get an advantage over others. So you see that Bruce would for example, train very hard to get to a high level, but he wouldn't show people how he got to that level because he wanted to keep that edge. He'd, he'd read some very good books to help him gain a further understanding himself and of martial arts, but he wouldn't let people know about these books. And he'd make it almost appear as if this came from himself and nobody else. He would study other people's um, martial art and exchange techniques with other people, but he wouldn't really acknowledge the other people to be um, people that helped him get to where he's at. It wasn't only until like after he died that was it expressed what he actually studied. It wasn't until after he died that his books were published and it was expressed that he was learning from J. Krishnamurti and from Tao and Zen and things of that nature. So, it's nothing new. It's common in the West. When people get good at something and people are competing with others, they don't want to show other people how they got to where they're at. They want to basically hide that information and keep it secret so that they can remain special. Rather, the spiritual way would be to share with others. That when you get to a higher level, you want to show other people how you got there as well. So you can help them grow. But Bruce didn't really do that. And it's just, he was caught in the game, the capitalistic game of fighting for money, fighting for fame. Now, I'm not blaming Bruce for any of this, but I'm just stating what I read and what was said in those books and stating how this does not represent the spiritualness of the martial art, of Eastern philosophy, of the teachings of Buddha, um, of J. Krishnamurti, of Zen, of Tao. Now, it was said in these books that Kung Fu was the origination of all martial arts. That karate was derived from Kung Fu. But karate is very 
popular in the West, more popular than Kung Fu, because karate was able to penetrate uh, the Western society before Kung Fu and be more publicized, more marketed. Um, you had they were talking about how they even you know the Elvis Presley was even training in in karate, and then um, that get, you know helped gain the recognition of karate, and Chuck Norris was trained in karate, and everybody's training karate, but really karate came from kung fu, but it's just that karate was more marketed in America, and it came into um, America's America recognized karate before they even knew about Kung Fu. Bruce Lee was the first one who introduced Kung Fu to America. Now I said that Kung Fu originated from Budi, you know, Budi Harma, which is a uh, uh, one of the sages from Buddha. You know the teachings of Buddha, and he was traveling to the Shaolin through Shaolin and he stopped by the temple the Shaolin temple and then he meditated in a cave near that temple for nine years they said and he came out of that cave out of that meditation and he saw in the temple in the Shaolin temple that the monks or the people the followers of Buddha's teachings were getting very weak due to all of the mental um training so he developed a form of exercise to help keep their bodies strong and through that that sharing of those exercises what developed the Sha, what we know as Shaolin Kung Fu and it's through the Shaolin Kung Fu that there was a woman who was a nun a Buddhist nun and she is the developer of Wing Chun where she was learning the, the forms of the Shaolin Kung Fu, but she didn't have much time to learn it, so she, what she did is she stripped it down to the most basic and essential and practical aspects of the Shaolin Kung Fu, and that's what she developed the, wind, the form of the style of Wing Chun. So everything started with this, um, this Burihama. And really, it started with Buddha, because the 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 sage Buddha Harma was the one who was following the teachings of Buddha. So really, the foundation of the martial arts rests in the teachings of Buddha. And if you understand the teachings of Buddha you clearly see that Bruce Lee was not following that way in the spiritual sense. But he was speaking it in his books, in his writings. And he was trying to teach it through some of his movies. But as far as him actually living that way, there is many aspects of his life of where he was not um, representing it that way. And really, it's because he was caught in between the rat race of America, of striving for that fame. And once he got there, once he started to get that fame, he quickly started to realize how that way of living is not that enjoyable. But once you get there, there was no turning back. His life became very stressful. He couldn't really sleep anymore. And everybody that was coming towards him always wanted to give him a deal. Everybody's shoving money in his face. Everybody's asking him for money, asking him for favors. He didn't know who to trust. His life became very... Hectic.